Welcome, thank you all for coming. Um, a friend of mine recently shared this picture with me with the label MEV. <laughs> and, and sure enough, right, it looks, it's very reminiscent of the uh, mempool wars between searchers trying to snatch an opportunity uh, right from each other and try to get early, try to overbeat the other one, right? But, but is this a good metaphor for MEV? Is this actually MEV? People in the community now are very MEV aware. Uh, proof of that is that there's 18 talks in this DEFCON around the topic of MEV. There were zero in the last, so that's quite a, a testament for this. Um, despite this, I would argue that we're not 100% sure of what MEV even means. Uh, this is a poll from last year. Uh, so which of the following uh, is not MEV, right? There seems to be rough consensus around front running, uh, but much less so around transaction fees, liquidation rewards, and like all of these are MEV. Uh, it's very, very evenly split. This one is more recent, right? Like the, the, the last year, from last year to this year, there has been uh, many developments, as you all know. This is a recent one from last month. Are block rewards a form of MEV? This is pretty impressive. It's almost half and half, right? So it's really a, a contentious concept, right? Um, this is a, perhaps a more trolley one. Uh, conference swag is a form of MEV. Uh, I won't go through this chart. It's a lot of fun. I encourage you all to check it out. Uh, essentially, there's two dimensions that are uh, taken into account here. One is uh, value and one is um, extraction. So depending on where you sit on each of these uh, uh, variables is uh, yeah, what you should consider MEV or not. And, but are these the only dimensions that are relevant? Right? So again, uh, doesn't seem like there's a lot of consensus. This is the ultimate one. <laughs> I hope nobody got robbed. <laughs> I really hope so. Uh, but yeah, so I think this meme illustrates, this is also my favorite meme format. It's not mine, by the way, but uh, I think it's, uh, it illustrates what I'm trying to, to um, get through to you uh, today, right? Like, so we've been calling MEV a lot of things. And um, so in this talk, so in my work in trying to formalize MEV, uh, I've been argued that there's no consensus on a, on a formal definition of MEV, and there's many uh, around there, and we're using different things, and, and it's hard to come up with a formula. But in, in, in doing work for this talk, I realized that there's not even consensus on, on, on the concept, right, on the intuition of what uh, we want to call MEV. So in this talk, I want to um, go through uh, different ideas and say why many of these are not MEV. And, and crucially, this talk is uh, tightly coupled together with uh, my friend Shin's talk next, uh, who will tell you uh, what actually is MEV. So I encourage you to stay. He's going to roast me and tell you why the things I tell you now are actually wrong. So you should definitely stay. It's going to be a bit of a shorter talk, and he, he's going to uh, give a longer talk. And perhaps uh, if DMC allows us, we can do questions at the end. So, yeah. So since you all said that you were going to stay to his, for his talk. All right, let's get going. So, yeah, oh, I forgot. I have like a cool animation transparency. Okay, uh, just to tease Shin's talk. Okay, let's get going. So um, we're going to start with like a trivial example, right? Is MEV, uh, is the, the, all, are all the things that are MEV also uh, all the things that are value, right? Is value the same as MEV? Uh, right, this is a trivial example. We can easily argue that this is not the case, right? that there's more to MEV than to uh, any value. You can think of picking up a $1 bill out of, on the street, right? We wouldn't want to call that MEV. Hopefully, you all agree. Uh, but uh, this is still value, right? So again, this is a trivial example, but just to set the stage of the type of argument I'm going to be doing. And critically, this is all intuitions. There's no proofs here. I'm like just trying to uh, hone in a concept, and it's up to all of us what we decide to call MEV, right? It's a matter of uh, choice. And there's no, like, uh, again, proofs here. Um, okay, so first uh, non-trivial example. Uh, is MEV equal to the set of 
uh, value on the blockchain, right? Um, so uh, if you think of the um, definition, the original definition in the Flashbridge 2.0 paper, uh, there was like value that can be extracted by miners, by censoring, reordering transactions. So there's a lot of blockchain in concepts there, right? Uh, transactions, miners, etc. So, so it might well be that, okay, what we're calling MEV is nothing else than value on the blockchain. And sure enough, uh, there's things that are value on the blockchain that are also MEV. Uh, ARBs are one of them, and I'm going to be using ARBs like a uh, canonical example of MEV. ARBs like talking about arbitrage on a blockchain, for instance, right? Um, but uh, are there things that are value on a blockchain that are not MEV? Well, here one could argue that, okay, if I do a simple ETH transfer, right, and then the miner has no way to extract that, so we can call that value on the blockchain that it's not MEV. Although, put a pin on this idea because we're going to come back to it because it's not as simple as it looks. Even a simple ETH transfer can get uh, trickier. But in principle, we can say, okay, there's some value on the blockchain that's actually not MEV. Um, how are the other side, right? Uh, how are they, and and let, me, let me also say that Mostly for the question of this is not MEV, we're going to be uh, thinking about the right side of these slides, like the inclusion of the pink set on the in the in the white set. But we're going to find interesting things along the way on the uh, left-hand side too, right? So we're going to also comment a bit on those. So in this case, um, is there MEV that's not value on the blockchains? Um, this is again a matter of choice, right? But I, w I would argue that we are striving for a more abstract general concept than value uh, that's uh, strictly on the blockchain. I don't see any, anything special about blockchains in terms of value. Blockchains are certainly special in terms of uh, coordinating devices, but I don't see them as like, again, uh, providing value, uh, uh, a characteristic that's so special, right? So in general, we would like to think of MEV as something more general. Um, and here, the canonical example you can think of is a centralized exchange. In a centralized exchange, uh, you have all the orders coming, and the operator can decide to extract value from users, uh, like Robinhood does. That's the Robinhood business model, right? So we might want to call that MEV. And matter of definition, you might not agree. Uh, feel free to come uh, and chat if, if you don't. But in principle, I would argue that perhaps we want that. One subtle point here is that we might need this if we start quantifying uh, centralized exchange versus decentralized exchange arts, right? So if we have value flowing in and out of the blockchain, then maybe when we start quantifying this, this uh, kind of arb arbitrage and so on, we might need to call that MEV if we want uh, like the, the, the whole calculation to be sound, right? So, um, okay, so value on the blockchain doesn't seem like it's the best uh, candidate for our uh, concept of MEV, so let's move on to the next one. Is MEV the same as front running? Right? Okay, we start with the intersection of these sets. Trivially, ARBs, again, as we saw, I'm going to use always ARBs here. Uh, the first leg of a sandwich, for instance, you can think of it as an ARB. This is clearly MEV, this is clearly front running. Okay, uh, how about we'll start with the left side here. Uh, also, obvious point, there's clearly MEV that's not front running. You can think of back running trivially, uh, or reorgs other things, uh, okay. So here the tricky part is on the right side. Are all things that are from running MEV, okay? And thinking from running here is you learn some information uh, from other parties and then you like are faster than the other in catching or capturing that value. Is that MEV? Again, the rugby example uh, in the first um, slide, right? So, um, here you can, you can take two paths. You can say, okay, uh, let's look at the rugby example. Okay, maybe I don't want to call that MEV, even if it has the characteristic of like, you know, being faster than, than the other person. And, and so there, there has to be something else for us to call uh, being early MEV. Because being early, again, doesn't uh, have that much to do with the structure of, of the value itself. Uh, so here, okay, what's the missing part here, perhaps uh, we can think of a coordinator, a coordinator that 
uh, is doing the allocations of value, right? And, and in the rugby, there's no really meaningful coordinator. You can think of I don't know, gravity as a coordinator, but it's a coordinator that cannot extract. It's like a dumb coordinator. So here, if you have a smarter coordinator, what happens is that the game theory gets more interesting, right? So the MEV concept becomes much richer. So, so here, okay, this is one path you can go uh, down and you can say, okay, not all front running is MEV because for it to be MEV, we need some uh, pl extra player. So this is perfectly fine until you start thinking and okay, you can think of the, ar the example of um, the Arbitrum chain, right? In Arbitrum, you have a first come first ser serve uh, centralized server uh, that cannot extract uh, and then people are doing arbitrage. So if you go down this path, considering that the coordinator there cannot extract, you would be, you would not be calling Arbitrum ARPs as MEV, right? And this is something many people would uh, frown upon, right? And in fact, the Avalanche devs at some point were saying, okay, ARPs are not MEV. And the searchers were laughing because they were saying, okay, we're, <laughs> call it what you will, we're making millions of dollars out of this. So I think there's some consensus that, okay, these type of things are MEV. So again, uh, tricky, contentious point. It's a matter of choice where we want to call that MEV or not. Um, okay, so this, again, question, is the set of things that are from running included in the set of things that are MEV? And we'll come back to this uh, at the very end. Okay, next set. Uh, is MEV, uh, the set of uh, things that are MEV equal to the set of things that are permissionless uh, value? Trivial example in the center. ARPs, right? This is permissionless. Uh, anybody can uh, make an ARP, and it's uh, also MEV, canonical example of MEV, so that's uh, fine. How about the uh, left side? Are all things that are MEV uh, permissionless? So when I work with definitions and formalization of, of MEV, uh, I argued for the importance of permissionlessness. In the, in the definition, because there were many definitions out there that included the notion of a player that can extract a value, but this is very tricky. And it's tricky because um, you can think of an, an example where you have a, an airdrop, right? You have an airdrop that's only entitled to you. And when you are going to claim the airdrop, the miner cannot do anything, right? So there's no way that miner can steal that value from you. So I would say, okay, permissionless looks like it's important in the, in the concept of MEV. Although if you think, of another twist to that example, say you have an, an airdrop which you can only claim at a specific block height. And say that the proposer of that block knows about this. So then they can credibly extort you and tell you, look, if you don't give me a share of the airdrop, I won't include your transaction, right? So then, okay, after all, there might be some uh, MEV character to this, this extortion capability of, of the coordinator, right? And this might look like a very contorted example. Okay, after all, is there any airdrop that like, is only valid for one uh, block? But if you think like a, a li little bit deeper on this and, and if you do some numbers, uh, you can think of the earlier uh, ether transfer and from the, 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 the earlier slide and there, if you have a collusion of, say, 10% of the validators, they could, in principle, uh, extort you for 0.4% uh, uh, of the value. Uh, Shin has run these calculations, right? So 0.4% of the value is a lot, right? It's uh, more or less the same as the uh, fees that you have, you pay like swapping on Uniswap or whatever. So actually, this example, again, that looks contorted, it's not and could very well happen, right? So extortion is a real thing. Um, Okay, that's again for the uh, left side. On the right side, this is not too interesting. We have the example I gave you earlier of the dollar bill. You pick up a dollar bill, that's permissionless value, and that's arguably not MEV. Uh, but okay, that's an example that's uh, outside of the blockchain. So perhaps we wanna consider permissionless value on the blockchain how this set of things. Okay, the two examples I gave you for the uh, intersection and for the MEV side uh, are on the blockchain, so we know this uh, exists uh, in principle. So how about the other side? Are there things that are permissionless value on the blockchain that are not MEV? This is a question for you, actually. Uh, I haven't found an example, so if you can uh, come up with an example again of things that are permissionless value on the blockchain, 
that you wouldn't call MEV, please let me know, and we can sort out that uh, set inclusion uh, there. So this is a one uh, candidate set to consider for characterizing or half characterizing MEV, if you will. Okay, thanks for bearing with me. We've been through a lot of like uh, Venn diagrams. This is the last one. Okay, how about value extractable by a monopolistic coordinator? Again, I've argued, sorry, I've argued for the importance of a coordinator uh, in, because it changes the game theory. It makes it more fun. Uh, so here again, critically, the coordinator needs to be able to extract for that game theory to be richer. And it has to be monopolistic because also for the uh, extortion I showed you before, if, if it's not monopolistic, then this doesn't work. So. Uh, in the intersection, we have the same example as before. Arbitrage is an example of this. Monopolistic coordinators come like naturally in blockchains, like the proposers are, are that, right? Um, okay, so how about the left side? Are things that are MEV and that are not uh, value extractable by a monopolistic coordinator? And here it depends on your earlier choice on the arbitrum example, right? The front running example. Um, okay, if you. Uh, decided to call Arbitrum, ARBs, uh, that type of front-running MEV, then this is an example of uh, an element here, right? Because it's not value extracted by a monopolistic coordinator, but you're still choosing to call it MEV. Again, a choice. Um, finally, let's look at the other side. Is there value extractable by a monopolistic coordinator that is not MEV? Can you find examples of this? I haven't, so again, a uh, challenge to you all. Please come talk to me if you find an example uh, in this set there. And again, we can sort out this, this question here. Uh, okay, uh, so we've dealt with the concept of MEV. We came up with three uh, sets that look like might always be MEV. This is, of course, not a full uh, characterization, just to sum up, value extractable by a monopolistic coordinator, uh, front running, permissionless value on the blockchain. Uh, this is quite an unfortunate picture, I would argue, right? Because there's these three disjoint sets and how are they related to each other? This doesn't look like a unified theory of MEV, right? One would uh, ideally like to have a more concise idea of what MEV is, right? And these are only if at all, partial characterizations. So uh, what come in the talk that comes next, uh, Shin is gonna uh, share uh, a little bit of that and try to come up with, this was more like an outside in uh, exploration of the idea of MEV. Shin is gonna share uh, inside out, a more constructive way to think cohesively about MEV. Uh, so again, thank you so much for coming. Uh, appreciate you all being here.